Okay, um, hello everyone. All right, so the next program in chapter five is monthly sales tax. All right, so a retail company must file a monthly sales tax report listing, uh, listing the total sales, total sales for the month and the amount of state and county sales tax collected. The state sales tax rate is 5% and the county sales tax rate is 2.5%. Write a program that asks the user to enter the total sales for the month. From this figure, the application should calculate and display the following. The amount of county sales tax, the amount of state sales tax, and then the total sales tax, which is the county plus state you know, taxes. All right, so since chapter five is all about functions, we are going to go ahead and create functions to basically calculate these individual, um, um, or basically solve these in the individual questions that, that is being asked from the, you know, from us in the question. All right, so let's start. Um, over here it says, write a program that asks the user to enter the total sales for the month. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We are going to ask the user to enter the total sales for the month, right? So let's, let's go ahead and do that. Now, since chapter five is all about functions, let's create a function that's going to do that, right? So let's create a function that is going to ask the user for sales, right? So let's define a function, okay? And, and then call it ask for sales. Okay, so we've defined a function, called, uh, we're calling it ask for sales. Now ask for sales is not going to accept in any argument, so I'm not going to define any parameters, right? So empty parameters. And what this ask for sales is going to do is it's basically going to ask the user to enter the sales, uh, enter the, to the total sales for the month. So let's see, let's, let's even call it ask for total sales. And then all it's going to do is it's, oh, we're going to ask the user to enter the sales, right? So we're going to use the input function to do that. So input function is going to be used to ask the user to enter uh, the total sales for the month. So all we're going, all we are doing is asking the user to please enter the total sales for the month. All right, so now, so that's that's what the input function does. The input function displays this question or you know kind of a question, and it uh, it waits for the user to or it allows the user to enter a response. So it pop up it pops up some kind of text box, and then allows the user to enter a enter a response. Now. Everything that a user types is returned by the input function as a, as a string. In this case, we're asking the user to enter the total sales for the month, right? So the user is likely to enter a number, but then the input function always returns a string. So even if the user types in a number, that number is going to be returned as a string. That's how the input function works. So in order to really use that response from the user, because guess what? We can't use strings in calculations. We have to convert that string into a number so we can use it. In this case, we want that number as a float because the user can, can type in, let's say, oh, $2,500.67, you know, or, or $258.95, okay? Th there can be a decimal, so that's why we, we want to convert this number as a float. Or, yeah, so basically, yeah, there, there can be a float, float in num floating point number. So we are going to use the float function to basically Converts everything that the user types into a float. So we are basically converting everything that the, everything that the user has typed, which is being returned by the input function as a string, to a float. Now, once we do that, we need a place to store it, right? And what is being returned over here is is basically the total sales for the month. So I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it total sales um, for month. It doesn't mat matter if it's too long. You can make it short if it, if you're not too comfortable. So I'm defining a variable called total sales for month. That's going to be stored here. Now, as you can see, there's a line here. And this line, I don't know if you can see it. It's very faint. It's gray. Um, this line over here, it's, it serves as a guideline or, or as a guide, a guide for me to not exceed 80 characters on a line. It's like a Python standard to not exceed 80 characters on a line. So this line here just helps me tr try to type 80, um, at most 80 characters on a line. All right, so I know that I've, I've exceeded 80 characters at a line because I've exceeded this line, so I need to go ahead and break this line into two. So I'm going to break it somewhere around here. Close, I'm going to close the string, concatenate it with the beginning of the string, and then break it somewhere here. Now, before you break any line in Python, you have to type in a backslash. So I'm going to break it somewhere here. here. Type in a backslash and hit enter. 
right? So I've broken into, into into two lines. It's still the same line, but just broken it in, broken it into two. All right. So now we will have the total sales for the month stored here. And once we have that in this function, what we want to do is return it. Return total sales for month. This way. So basically, that's what this function is going to do. To do, to do. We, we define one function that's just going to ask the user for the total source and then return it. And then, it, over here it says, from this figure, the application should calculate and display the, the following. The amount of county sales tax. Okay, so now we have to basically calculate the county sales tax. We have been given the county sale, uh, uh, sales tax rate as 2.5. Over here it says, um, and the county sales tax rate is 2.5%. So now let's go ahead and define another function. Ch since chapter five is all about functions, let's go ahead and define another function and call it, let's say, calculate county sales tax because that's what we're going to do. We, we have to go ahead and cal calculate the county sales tax based on the total sales for the month. So I'm going to define a function. I'm going to call it calculate county sales tax. Okay, it's a long name, but it's fine. Um, you know, you, you can make it short if you want. I, I like long names; it doesn't really matter. As long as it's descriptive enough, I'm good. I want it to be descriptive, so feel free to make it short if you if you're not too comfortable. All right, now now when you think about it, calculate county sales tax. Okay, it's going to need um, as an argument the total sales for the month. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and because we are calculating in this case. 2.5% of something of the we are, so we are calculating the 2.5% 2, 2 of the total sales for the month right we've been told the, uh, the, the tax rate is 2.5% so we are calculating 2.5% of, of the total sales for the month so we, we have to, we need a total sales for the month as an argument so that we can calculate 2.5% of it so I'm going to define a parameter for total sales um, total sales for the month right it doesn't matter if it's the same name Okay, this is just a parameter. The scope of this variable is within this function. The scope of this variable is within this function. It doesn't matter if, you know, these two names I'm going to declare, although they're going to have the same name like this, they don't, it, it doesn't matter. It's not the same. I need to change the colors. The colors are not too nice. I'll change it. I'll change it in the next video or something. I had to reinstall my uh, Python uh, wing, wing 101 ID, so that's why everything has reset, but I'll change it. I change the color so it looks it looks like the Java the Java colors I use the Java ID colors I use. Um, okay, so like I said, this variable the scope of this variable is within this function here, and the scope of this variable is within this function. Okay, these are two different you know in, in functions variables, the scope of variables okay work within within each, that that particular variable. Okay. So I'm defining a parameter for total sales for the month, right? And over here in this function, what we want to do is basically calculate 2.5% of the total sales for the month because we know the tax rate for the county sales is 2.5%. So we, are calcul we know that 2.5%, okay, is 2.5 divided by 100. Now let me go ahead and pull. We, we, don't, we don't necessarily need this, right? But if you have, let's say, 2.5 divided by 100 that's 2.5 percent you can you can go directly and, and type in 0 0.025 times the total sales for the month to, to calculate 2.5 percent of that right or we can just type in directly we don't even need that I, I just wanted to show you I don't even know why I just wanted to show you the you know that you know 2.5 percent right so 2.5 percent is the same as 2.5 divided by 100 so we are calculating 2.5 percent of this this amount right so 2.5 divided by 100 now, since we want the answer, we want to evaluate that first. I'm going to surround it with, surround that with parentheses. Okay, so 2.5 percent off. You can read the multiplication sign as off. Okay, the asterisk sign as off. So 2.5 percent off the total sales for month. Um, the, the the total sales for month argument that the users or whoever calls this function is going to pass. Okay. So now we are calculating 2.5% of that. And then 2.5% is just basically the county sales tax, right? So I'm going to go ahead and define a variable called county sales tax and, and then equate it to this because once we calculate the 2.5% of the total sales for month, that's our, that's our county sales tax. And once we have that, we can go ahead and return it. So go ahead and return 
the county sales tax. Okay, so now we're done with that um, function. Now the next thing we have to calculate is the amount of state sales tax. It's going to be the same as this, so let's just go make a copy of this and then change it. So I'm going to paste this here. Now what we are doing is we are calculating not the county sales tax, but the state sales tax. It's also going to need a total sales for month it's all because we are calculating, in this case, not 2.5%. We are calculating 5% because over here it says the state sales tax rate is 5%. Okay, it's 5%. Basically, 5% of the total sales for a month, for a month. So we will need a total sales for, for month as an argument. And then we are calculating not 2.5%. We are calculating 5%. 5% is the same as 5 divided by 100. Now, there's a problem here. 5%, right? When you type it in the calculator, you get... Okay, 5% is the same as 5 divided by, divided by 100. When you type in 5 divided by 100 in the calculator, you get 0 0.05. But there's a problem here with, with, with Python. F because both of these operands, the 5 and the 100, because both of them are integers, Java is going to consider this calculation here, 5 divided by 100, it's going to uh, consider it as an integer division. And the problem is, instead of giving us a double, instead of giving us 0 0.05 as the answer of 5 divided by 100, because this is considered as an in integer division, it's only going to give us the integer part of this answer. It's only going to give us 0 and then drop anything after the decimal point. We don't need that. We're going to get get a problem because when you get zero times the total, so anything multiplied by zero is zero. We don't need that as an answer. You know, so Java is considering this calculation over here as an as an in integer division simply because the both operands are integers. That's what happens when you have both operands uh, dividing each other. You you get an integer as an answer, even if you the answer is really a decimal or yeah, a decimal like this. Right? So it's a problem. Although you're supposed to get 0 0.05, you're going to get 0 because Java considers this as an in integer division because both operands are integers. So we now this uh, we didn't give us any problem because one of them was a double. Now, for, for, for it to really give you 0 0.05 over here, at least one of the operands has to be a double. At least one of them. It can, this 5 has to be a double, or this 100 has to be a double, or both. But it, but it requires at least one of them. And that's why this wasn't a problem because at least one of one of the operands, in this case, two point five, was was a was a, um, a float, right? So, or a decimal. So, it didn't complain. But over here, it's going to give us an error. So we need to basically find a way to um, convert one of these operands or, or both, but it has to be at least one. One of them it can be the five or the hundred to uh, float. Now you can go ahead and just say five point zero, or you can go ahead and just say hundred point zero. Or you can just say 100.0 and 5.0. One of them has to be a float. But we want to leave it this way and then use typecasting in, in, um, in, in Python to convert one of these operands to a float, right? Now, the way you do that in Python is um, you, ha you type in, so let's see, over here. All right, so the way you do that, I, I, think I'm, I, mean, I think it should work. I think I'm either confusing it in Java. But in Python, we, we can go ahead and um, cast it out. If it doesn't work, I'll, 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 I'll switch it. But what you normally do is you type in what you want to convert this into. So basically, we type in, we want, because we want to, let's, in this case, let's just go ahead and cast this 5 to a float. Okay, one of them has to be a float, so let's use 5. You can also cast 100. But let's cast, cast 5 into a float. The way you cast 5 into a float is you type in what you want to cast it to. In this case, we want to um, kind of convert it to a double or cast it to a double. So you type in, oh, sorry, a float rather. We want to cast it to a float. So we type in the word uh, float in front of it in parentheses. Now, I think I'm either confused, but we'll see. We'll see if it works. We type in um, float in parentheses. We'll, we'll, I'll make sure this is uh, this is correct. Um, Hold on. If it's not correct, we'll, we'll just we'll convert it to a float. Uh, hold on one second. Let me just make sure. Yeah, I think I'm getting it confused for some reason. All right. Yeah. So the way you normally do that do this is you type in what you want to cast this to. 
um, the, the type, okay, it, it, the type is rather surrounded by parentheses. Um, hold on one second. Let, let, me, let me just go ahead and, um, and then run this just to make sure. I think I'm confusing it with Java, but we'll fix it. So I'm just saving this. Let me save this um, where I normally save the, I, I put in my Dropbox, the Python program. So Dropbox. Okay, let me just now look for the folder itself. Um, okay, so chapter five. I'm going to save this as what's the name of this monthly sales tax? Monthly sales tax at pi. Well, before that, I'll create a folder in this. I call it monthly sales tax also. And then save this as also monthly sales tax to pi. And then. So let's see what we have. We have an error. Okay, so let's see. Syntax error. Okay, so, so it has a problem with this. All right. We will go ahead and just and convert it using the float function rather. Just by, so let me stop this. We'll go ahead and use a float function and try to convert this. To a float this way, right? You're converting to a float this way, just like the just like um, over here when we're converting this input to a float. Let's try that and see. Okay, so that, so so I think that, that, that since that doesn't give us any error, um, that's fine. Now we're not running anything. We we are not expecting anything because all, all we are doing is defining functions. So that's why it's not really showing us anything. But it's not giving us an error, so we're fine. Um, my thought. You know, in, uh, you know, I don't know. It's been a while. You know, it's, uh, you know, just taking a week off this. <laughs> I think I'm getting it confused. But uh, in, in Java, you have to go ahead and um, cast it. You, you know, the previous way, the what I just did. But I, I just cross check and make sure. That for some, you know, sometimes tri uh, tri trivial things like you know something you do for over and over again just skips you just like that. And it's it's funny how it just skips you. But um, I think um, if this works, that's fine. We can even try it in the interaction pane just to make sure here. So th this is just you know just just a moment here. I'm just trying something here. So if you just convert five to a float, you get five point zero. So this will work for us. Okay. Remember I said that one of these operands has to be a float. So in this case we've made this a, a float. So this is not going to give us zero. Again, it's going to give us zero point zero five. So let's just test it. If if I was doing five divided by hundred, well, well well over here. It gives you um, where is it? So over here it gives you zero point zero five, right? But when you when you try to do it here, it's going to give you zero because of of um, integer division, right? So let's just um, do that. All right, I'll cross check just to make sure. I'll cross check just to make sure. Let, let me just. Um, We may not even have to cast it if, if this is really giving us up. Oh, so I don't have the value here. So let's say 5,000. Okay, so it's giving us the correct value. All right, so you know what? I think I'm, I'm, I'm confu confusing it with, um, with Java. I think, I, I think I, that's, that, that's what it is. I thought we had, we had to cast it. Um, it's fine. Because, yeah I, yeah, I think I'm confusing it with Java. Let me go ahead and remove this, move this Python shell. So, yeah, that's what's happening. Well, anyway, we'll see. Let's let's just take this away, and and <laughs> if if this is really what is what it's given us, then forget about what I said. This is going to give us zero point zero five. I think in Java, when you try to do this, you definitely it's definitely an error. And in Python, so now I think I'm getting it. So in Python, if you wanted wanted to actually do an integer division, you'd have to use two slashes. So. It looks like this is actually going to give us 0 0.05. So, so forget about everything I said about typecasting and this is going to give you an integer. That's, that happens in Java, all right? So, so it's fine. Although, although it, it was a good you know, concept, it was a good lesson. It applies in so many programming languages. If you try to just do straight in, um, division like this, you'd have to cast one of them. So yeah, that was Java, right? That was Java. So yeah, forget about that. In Python, 5 divided by 100, uh, it looks like so far, I think it's going to give you, and I, and I, and I know this, but it's just keeping me. Um, I think it's going to give us 0.05. If it doesn't, we'll fix it. But so far, I think it's given us the right answer. 
All right. <laughs> All right. So yes. So again, for, forget about everything I said about Pyth, uh, typecasting for now, and then let's just w work work with the calculation. So we are calculating five percent of the total sales for month. Okay. So we we know that. 5, 5 divided by 100 right now, it's given as 0 0.05, so that's fine. So let, let's just stick with that. And this is also given as the correct answer, so let's stick with that. So 5% is the same as 5 divided by 100 off. You can read the multiplication sign as off the total sales for the month argument, which is going to be given by whoever calls us calculate state um, sales tax function. All right, so once we have the um, county sales tax, let's go ahead and return it. All right, we're, go we're going to return it. All right, so the last thing we're going to go ahead and calculate is the total sales tax, right? And that's basically going to be the county sales tax plus the state, tells, uh, the state uh, sales tax, which is over here, county plus state. So let's go ahead and define a function for that also, since chapter five is all about functions. So define, calculate um, total sales tax. And total sales tax is going to need two things to add add together, right? It's going to need a state t a sales tax and it's going to need a county sales tax. So I'm going to define a parameter for the state sales tax and a parameter for the county state tax. Oops, state tax. So again, these variables are, are not exactly the same as these. They're not, you know, I'm not, I'm not referring to this variable here. This county sales tax is not, you know, the same as this. I'm not referring to this county sales tax by typing it here. I'm not refer referring to this. Whoops. Okay, sorry. Um, I, one thing I need to point out. So when we were calculating the county sales tax, we, ca we calculated it with this formula, and we had it, we stored it here as county sales tax. And when we were done, we were returning the county sales tax. Over here, we were calculating the, County, uh, sorry, the state sales tax. So we calculated the uh, the, the state sales tax. Remember, I copied and pasted this. I was supposed to change everything, and I didn't. All right. So we over here we found a county sales um, state sales tax. Over here we're calculating the state sales tax. So we're not supposed to basically store. We were supposed to name the variable accordingly. So it's instead of county sales tax, sales tax is going to be state sales tax because that's what we are really calculating here. I forgot to change it because remember I copied and I, I copied and copied and pasted, and then we're returning the st the state sales tax. So I'm just going to copy and paste it here, which I just did. All right, so I so I had to change it. So change yours also. All right, so now we are c calculating the total sales tax, and like I was saying, I'm not referring to this county sales tax by typing this, and I'm not, I'm not referring to this state sales tax by typing this. These variables. The scope of these variables are only within this function. These, the, the scope of these variables are within their individual, individual functions. All right. So once I have these two values given by the by whoever calls this function, all I do is I add them up. So I add the state sales tax plus the county Hold on one second. <laughs> So over here, I said county state tax. It's county sales tax. I'm sorry. All right, so let's just make sure I, I, I did it correctly. County sales tax, state sales tax, state sales tax, and county sales tax. All right, it was supposed to be county sales. I'm defining a parameter for the county sales tax, not the, count, not the county state tax. <laughs> sorry about that. All right, so I'm adding the state sales tax over here, and I'm also uh, to the county sales tax over here. And when I do that, that's going to be my total sales tax. So I need a place to store that. I need to create a variable to store that. So I'm going to do that, and create a variable called total sales tax. Okay, and store the result of this calculation in it. Once I have the total sales tax, once we have that, let's go ahead and return it. So return the total sales tax here. 